Good morning, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I know that this is not my usual hour to be seen on TikTok, but welcome to the TikTok community as well. Welcome to everybody watching me from YouTube and on Facebook. This is our 11 o'clock uh, Sunday morning service, our interdenominational service. So if you didn't go to church, you are just in time and just in store for the teaching of the word. So I invite you to invite somebody, click on the notification bell there, just share that share button and click on the notification bell and you get to hear me teaching the word on this Sunday morning all the way from Pretoria. Whatever country you are coming in from, please make sure. Good afternoon, Nima. Good to see you. Guys, this is not the prayer session. This is the service. This is our Sunday morning service. We're going to be learning the word. So if I encourage you to get a journal, get a pen, we're going to be going through a lot of scriptures. And on Sunday mornings, I do a lot of teaching and we going to go into the scriptures. Amen, somebody. So if you are here in the session, type no vision failure. No vision failure is what I'm teaching about. Hey, sis fix. It's good to see you. No vision failure. Let me make sure everybody can see me right now. No vision failure. I see you. There's somebody who's coming to join you right now on YouTube. I can see you people are gathering. Very quickly, we're going to start. I get right into the word because there's a lot of teaching that needs to happen. I know that we've actually not had a lot of teachings on our 10 o'clock uh, in the evening sessions. But today, you're going to be soaked in. So I just thought, let me just get that, the TikTok community as well. Those who have not gone for service. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 22 to 23 is our anchor scripture that we are going to start with. The book of Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 22 to 23. No vision failure. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 22 to 23. The Bible says, Son of man, what is this proverb that you have in the land of Israel saying the days are long and every vision fails? The days are long and every vision fails. How can we get ourselves to a position where where we're not seeing anything come to pass. Nothing gets better. Therefore, tell them, that says the Lord God, I will put an end to this proverb. I will put an end to this proverb and they will no longer use it as a proverb in Israel. But say to them, the day is drawing near as well as the fulfillment of every vision. If you believe it and you take that as your prophecy, I need you to type in the comment section and say, my vision shall be fulfilled. My vision shall be fulfilled. My vision shall be fulfilled. Track with me very fast and make sure you're writing the scriptures on a book somewhere on the side. The objective of this service, the objective of the teaching this morning is that we need to unravel the factors that will cause vision failure. What are the things that cause our visions to fail? Because the scripture that I've just read from makes it clear that there is a point where vision fails. Hallelujah. Either it fails to be called conceived as a vision or it fails to be fulfilled so the vision can be conceived but you may fail to fulfill it or you may conceive it but fail to fulfill it or you may fail totally to even conceive it so whether it is a failure to be received or a failure to be realized this morning we need to deal with the reasons why visions fail hallelujah the first point that i want you to make a note of is that vision fails because of the wrong company company. We're going to go through what are the enemies of vision. Enemies of vision, if you're making notes. Enemies of vision. Number one, the wrong company. Be careful of the company you keep because they will determine whether or not you're going to conceptualize, whether you're going to dream, whether you're going to conceive this dream, whether you're going to realize it, whether you're going to fulfill it. The wrong company. Wrong company. If you're typing in your notes, write there boldly. Avoid wrong company. How, who, what and who do we need to avoid to make sure that our vision comes to pass? Number one is the wrong company. Proverbs 13, 20 says, He who walks as a companion with the wise shall be wise, but he who walks with fools, he will also be foolish and fool. That is why when you're walking with the wrong company, people tend to paint you with the same brush. People tend to treat you the same and people treat you foolishly. Even if you are wise, even if you are thinking better than them, but somebody, somewhere, welcome Tlengiwe, Somebody will treat you. The, the Bible says in, 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 in verse 20 of Proverbs 13, he says, the companion of the conceited, people regard you as con conceited. People who are dull-witted, people will also think you are dull. People who are themselves fools 
And the Bible cautions us and it says, you will experience harm. You will experience harm because you are attracting the wrong people. You are moving with the wrong company. Bad luck starts befalling you because you are always with the wrong company. If bad things always accompany you, ask yourself, am I in the wrong association? Then when we track the scriptures one more time into Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17, the Bible says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another and influences another through discussion. So the people you are discussing with can influence where you get in life. The people you are in conversation with can influence where you get in life, whether your vision will fail or not. You check again with me. We, we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. The Bible says, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. So you can be a person who's a good person. You can be a person who's got good morals. But because you're keeping the bad company, you now start formulating bad habits. That's why you cannot hang around with people who are eating bad nutrition and not be influenced. You can't be hanging around with people who are drinking and not drink. It's a lie. I know you are strong, but at one point you're going to be tempted. The book of Genesis chapter 37 tells a story of a man called Joseph and how he was a dreamer and he calls his brothers and he starts dreaming and he tells his brothers, this is what I dreamt. And these guys say, are you mad? Do you think that we are going to bow down to you? And he dreams another dream in the very same chapter of Genesis chapter 37. He tells his father the dream of how he saw the sun and the moon, everything bowing. And the father, although he did, he, he dismisses it and he says, this guy must be crazy, but he, he, it got him thinking. So what do you learn from the story of Genesis chapter 37? From the story of Genesis chapter 37, you start seeing that when you are with the wrong association and the wrong company, you people will start to envy you. The brothers of Joseph started envying him. They started jealousing him. So type in that comment section and tag your neighbor and tell them, God is cautioning you against people who will be jealous of your vision. People who will be jealous and envious of you. Be careful of envy and jealousy from the company that you keep. If you keep the wrong association, what happens? Jealousy, envy, jealousy, envy. Hallelujah. Even Herod himself could not figure out where the son was going, where the, 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 the child who was going to be the savior was going to be born. He had to call the Magi's to, to try and explain and, and follow and interpret the star so that he can see who he needs to go and kill. There will always be people who want to kill your vision once they know about it. That is why it's important not to tell everybody about your vision. If you want to make sure that your vision does not fail, you need to keep certain things secret. Herod had to employ the stargazers and, and say, search for me where the sun is going to be a, a, a born. So what is the lesson that we take from all this? Association can lead to the abortion of your vision. Thank you so much, Tlengue, for sharing the live. Thank you for everybody sharing the live. Association can lead to the abortion of vision. Association can affect your mindset. The company you keep affects your mindset. Whether it's good company or bad mind, bad company, it will affect your mindset. That's why when you hang around with people who don't dream about going nowhere, you will not go anywhere yourself. Company that you keep, the company you keep will affect the choices that you make. You can't choose if you don't know that there's an option of choosing. God bless you, Simon. Company affects lifestyle. The lifestyle that you live, the lifestyle that you are keeping is affected by your association. So who you walk with affects where you can see and what you can see. The reason why you don't see beyond where you are, the reason why you don't see when you don't see the vision of where you are and where you're going is because of the company you keep. You keep on seeing the negative. You keep on seeing why it cannot work. Child of God, not everyone is qualified to know your vision. Not everyone is qualified to know your vision. Because sharing the right vision with the wrong people will lead to the wrong outcome. If you share, it's the right vision. Is it a good thing? Yes. Is it going to benefit others? Yes. But you shared it with the wrong people. What does it mean? Wrong outcome. Because it can be aborted. It can be cut short. Shano makadia basata. 
I'm glad, Z. I'm glad. Ah, I'm glad that this is a word of warning for somebody and somebody's going to receive it. So when you speak your vision to the wrong people, you begin to attract envy, number one. And secondly, you attract hatred. People start hating you for no reason. You start attracting harm. Have you had those people that just hate you for no reason? So your, your dream is a threat is a threat to people who are mediocre, people who are just living life anyhow, who are just any at any level. It's a threat to people who are mediocre. Somebody say, I will not be mediocre in my life in Jesus' name. I'm not average. It is a threat to people who don't know how to break above average. All they know is just average life. They just know just, you know what, as long as, as, long as I just live and breathe. No, we are not here to just live and breathe. We are here to make it. We are here to, to add to the world. We are here to make the, the world a better place, better than what we found it. If God is going to take you somewhere, child of God, if God is going to take you somewhere, those that are going nowhere will always be reacting to you. Those who are going nowhere are the ones who are going to be reacting to you. They will always have something to say. You will even wonder, why are you so threatened? I have not even arrived. I have not even manifested this thing yet. But you are so threatened that you want to squash me before I have even risen. Oh, mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. If the people you walk with don't see far, they can't dream as far like you, they will impart you with short vision. They will impact you with short-sightedness. Somebody say, I cannot be short-sighted. I refuse to be short-sighted. These are enemies of vision. They impact you with short-sightedness. These are people in whose company your vision and your dreams simply disappear. Because they tell you, listen, ah, you, you, you're just too much. That thing cannot come to pass. Listen, other people have failed. Why do you think you're going to pass? Your dreams just disappear. They don't want to discuss it. They'd rather discuss other things that are useless. These are people who, who, who represent the opposite of everything that you represent. You represent A, they represent B. You can see this thing is not gelling. The people are not gelling. It's, it's, just, it's just not matching. It's not make sure. The second enemy of vision is discouragement from delay. You're going to have to fight discouragement from delay. They that discourage you, those things that discourage you from delay, that, that cause delay, let me put it that way. That's a better English version. You're going to have to fight discouragement. You're going to have to actively say, I will not be discouraged. It looks like a setback. It looks like I didn't achieve as what I thought today, but tomorrow I can do better. What is it that I can do better? The book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2, verse, uh, verse two to 3 says, the vision is yet for an appointed time. It might look like it's delaying. It might look like it's tearing, but wait for it. Write the vision. Engrave it plainly on tablets. Write it down so that you can look at it yourself. Write it down on post-it stickers. Put it up so that you can be reminded, by the way, this is what I set out to do. This was my goal when I started the year. Some of you are reflecting back and you're saying, between January and now, what was I, what was I doing? I missed it. Where was your tablet? Where did you write down? what the vision was. If you wrote down what the vision was, you would have introspected on it every single day, every week, every month to see whether you are still on track. Write the vision, engrave it plainly upon tablets. That's your journal. Engrave it plain. You don't need a gold journal. You just need a book. A two choir, three choir, four choir. I don't know how big your vision is. You should have laid down the steps to get to that point. My God, somebody shout one more time in the comment section. My vision will not fail. So that the one who reads it will run. If people want to partner with you, if people want to help your vision, we need to understand that you yourself understand your vision. You need to understand yourself so that others can understand you. Why do they make you make business plans when you go to the bank before they give you the money? They want to see whether you understand what you're asking money for. 
Do you understand what is going to be standing against you? Do you understand the pros and cons? Do you understand the weaknesses and the strengths of what you want to set out to do? Do you understand what is the expectation? Why do you think they write entrance exams for you to go into institutions? They want to know before they admit you to do that course in medicine. Do you understand what it will take from you? That it is not going to be studying for one hour. Are you ready to pay the price? I, you can't just wake up one morning and say, I have a vision, I'm going to be a medical doctor one day. My darling, it, it takes seven years. In other countries, it may be more. Your vision will not fail. And that's my prayer for you. Your vision will not fail. But you need to understand, God, God bless you, Sunay. You need to understand what is it that I'm getting myself into. I'm about to build a house. Do you understand? Did you write the vision? What kind of a house is it going to be? How much is it going to cost? How much do I have? How am, how am I going to eat this elephant? What am I going to do to make sure that it comes to pass? I'm not just going to just by default and just go. Am I communicating? Are you learning something? So that the one who reads it will run. The bank manager is waiting to run. The bank manager is waiting to go present your plan to the credit committee. And say, this vision for this business, for this, I don't know, whatever it is that you are, you are busy with, this person will be able to repay it. Why? I can see this person is going to create jobs. This business is going to work because the person has done the homework. The location is good. Not, uh-uh. I just woke up and I walked into the bank and I said, I want to do something. I believe God is with me. I know it might sound funny, but like, you can't just say that. You can't just say, I just, ha I just believe God is going to bless me. Did you do the research? Did you find out whether you are opening at the right spot? Do you know who the competition is? Do you know what's your upper hand? Yes, I know the anointing is with you, but what's your upper hand? Have you planned? You can't just start a business and decide I'm going to hire 17 people. Can you pay all of them? You can't just start a business and say, I'm just going to hire every one of my family members. No, it don't work like that. Some of you need to stop hiring family members. The problem is the family member. That's the challenge. Some of us need to understand that some things cannot be done with family. Sometimes family is what takes advantage of us. Family pays themselves before you actually have to divide the spoils. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. It's for a future time. There's a point where it manifests. There's a point where rewards come. There's a point where profit comes. It hurries towards the goal for fulfillment. When you have a vision and you are on track and your steps are there, you are now, you know, you are avoiding all these enemies of vision. It hurries towards fulfillment because it says, I must reward Penny. I must keep on re rewarding Zikali. Kana mashokodi yabasata. <laughs> Back to vision. Check your vision. Check your association. Check your level of discouragement. Why are you so discouraged? Why do you let discouragement just decide to, to just crush you? He says, because it will certainly come. The prophet says, it will certainly come. It will certainly come. So I'm assured it will certainly come. That means I need to do the homework. I need to do the work. I must wait patiently for it because it will certainly come. It will not delay. Noah, it was 500 years. He became the father of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. My God, let me speak to the one who says, I'm barren, I cannot conceive a child. My darling, it took Abraham what it took him. It took Herod, sorry, Noah, the years that it took him. Why won't God do it for you? Hallelujah. It happened when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and of the land that daughters were born of them. God is an on-time God. God is a God that unravels what needs to be unraveled at the, light, at the right time. He will always make a window for light. He will always make a window for ventilation at the right time. At the right time, the ark, when they were inside the ark with Noah, the light came at the right time. The window for ventilation came at the right time. 
The flood came and engaged. Covered all the earth. But they were protected. Somebody write in the comment section again. My vision will not fail. My vision will not fail. I must avoid enemies of vision. Job, that, that guy called Job in Job 14, says, if a man dies, will he live again? I will wait the days of my struggle until my change and release comes. Why do you want to give up if Job did not give up? Aya, Koda Bahashata. Why, why do you pen? says, I will wait. I will wait here until my change comes. Galatians 6 verse 9, he says, let us not grow weary in well-doing, but in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Take your neighbor and tell your neighbor, it is not time to faint. In due season, there is a due season. Be careful you don't miss your due season because of your impatience. In due season, we will reap if we faint not. If we, Another way of putting it is to say, if you do not give in, if you do not give in, you will reap. If you do not give in. So it means, as Habakkuk says, a vision is up for an appointed time. It requires your faith. It requires your persistence to experience the promises of God. Yes, they are yes and amen. But he works on his own time schedule. It requires what? I said faith. It requires what? Persistence. Faith and persistence. Faith and persistence. My vision will not fail. It's a lie. Where faith and persistence are lacking, vision can fail. That is an enemy. When your faith is lacking and your persistence is lacking, then you've got a problem. You've got an enemy lurking around and your vision is affected. One thing you must tell yourself is that God is not a man that he should lie. Nor is he a son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? Will he not do it? Has he spoken it and not made it happen and not made good of his word and fulfilled it? Somebody shout, God is not a liar. God is not a man that he can lie. He can't lie. If God said that this thing was going to work, it's going to work. If God said that he was going to bless you, he's going to bless you. There is a time frame, child of God, between the release of vision and the, and, and the realization of vision. Let me say it one more time. There is a time frame between the release of vision and the realization of vision. Release, realize. Release, realize. Every God-ordained vision is worth waiting for. Oh, take your neighbor. Dima, please help me tell somebody it's worth waiting for. It's worth waiting for. There is a time between the time it is released and the realization, therefore. In between is your waiting season. In between is your persistent season. In between is your patient season. It is worth waiting for. This thing is worth waiting for. Don't make things happen by yourself. Let God make it happen for you. You want a husband. Don't date boys. Hello? I'm just making that as an example. You want to build a skyscraper, stop building small, small things. Get your roots deeper in, get into the foundation, put your foundation much deeper. Stop rushing to cook the cake that you want. Let God cook your cake and bake it very well. It's worth waiting for. Why do you want to go through all these frogs that don't even tell you anything productive? You can see you are hanging around with people who are going nowhere very fast. It's worth waiting for. Those who are believing God for marital settlement, it's worth waiting for. It is worth waiting for. Stop panicking. You are not a can of cool baked beans. You do not have an expiry date. You don't have an expiry date. I don't care whether the doctor told you menopause is going to catch up. I don't care what the doctor... You do not... Please tell your neighbor there's no expiry date concerning you. In due season, you will reap if you faint not. In due season, you will reap if you do not give in. Faith and persistence. The time frame between your release and your realization. 
waiting child of god is not wasting oh somebody type that I, that's a powerful statement the fact that i'm in my waiting season it does not mean i'm in my wasting season i'm not in my wasting season i'm in my waiting season i'm waiting i'm not wasting as far as waiting on God is concerned. Those who wait on God do not waste in life. Those who wait on God do not waste in life. Those who wait on God do not waste in life. It is only when you refuse to be discouraged that if you refuse to be discouraged that you will now achieve your God ordained destiny. Somebody say, I refuse to be discouraged. I refuse to be discouraged. I refuse to be discouraged. I will achieve my destiny ordained by God. I refuse to be discouraged in the name of Jesus. I will not be weary in doing good things. In the proper time appointed by God, I will reap when I do not give in. When you faint in action, you fail with the vision. I will not fail. I will not be discouraged. I will not faint in action. My vision is too important. It cannot fail. The third thing that you will have to watch out for, which is an enemy of vision, is unrighteousness and ungodliness. Why did I say? Unrighteousness and ungodliness. In the book of Judges chapter 16, verse 20 to 21, she said, the Philistines are upon us, Samson. In fact, she said, upon you. See how they will, she even ad, a, abandoned, how Delilah just decides to abandon Samson. He awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as I have done time and after time, and I will free myself. But Samson did not know that the Lord had departed from him, that Ichabod had happened, that the glory had departed. Then the Philistines seized him and gorged him, and they gushed out his eyes and they brought him down to Gaza and bound him with two bronze chains. And he was forced to be a grinder of grain into flour at the mill in the prison. My God. Failure to guard your vision. Allowing ungodly association, ungodly women who will bring you down. Ungodly women who will waste your life. Ungodly women who led him to be gorged out his eyes. He thought that he still had it. He still thought he, he, he thought he was still in the game. Mm -mm. Gandhi God had gone. If you fail to protect your vision and guard your vision from failure, you will wake up one day thinking it is still at work. The anointing is and, and God is not in it anymore. Righteousness, moral righteousness, spiritual righteousness, integrity and a virtuous character exalts a nation says the book of proverbs he says if you walk in moral righteousness if you walk in spiritual righteousness if you walk in integrity if you walk in a virtuous character if you have a virtuous character you exalt a nation that is what exalts a nation but sin brings disgrace to any people so i must avoid by all means a sinful lifestyle i must avoid by all means missing the mark oh my god Time will fail me to get into the book of 1 Kings chapter 3 when, when you see how Solomon loved the Lord and he walked in the statutes of David his father except for the fact that he sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places ignoring what the law had provided and required of all the sacrifices. Oh my God, let me let me fast track this. This, this is a lot. Vision from God can never co coexist with transgression. When you've got time, please go and read the book of 1 Kings chapter 3. Is it 1 Kings 3? Read the entire chapter and you see how Solomon missed it. 1 Kings chapter 3, 1 Kings chapter 11. Read those scriptures. When you transgress against the laws of God, vision cannot coexist with that. If you choose the way of vision, you cannot choose the way of transgression. Transgression is when you miss it. Transgression is when you do the wrong thing. But if you choose transgression, 
you've excused yourself from vision. Any gain that you make in sin is at the expense of your vision because it's not going to be sustainable and it's not going to be not only sustainability, but you're going to have to pay back. Anything that you do by sin or through sin and you think because the devil will always come and collect. And when the devil comes and collect, he comes to erase. Any gain, therefore, that you make in sin will come at the expense of your vision, expense of your future, and at the expense of your destiny. That is why when you hear of people that um, in Zulu, they say, um, I'm going to try and explain this in English. Those who engage in muti or, or engage in, in extraordinary dark powers to get wealth, they are doing that wealth. They are getting wealth at what? At the expense of the true destiny and the vision because they want to expedite the thing that will be bad. So what happens is that it's at the expense of their future. There's a point where it cuts off. It's not permanent. Am I communicating somebody? So if you do not kill sin and if you don't kill ungodliness and if you don't kill unrighteousness, sin can kill your vision. Sin can kill your future. Sin can kill your destiny. That's why blood will always be required of your children when you engage dark powers to give you an expedited result before God expedites it. Come on, somebody. So the strength of your consecration, how consecrated you are in terms of avoiding sin, the strength of your consecration will determine the strength of your vision. How consecrated am I to this lifestyle, to this life that God has given me? Well, how am I? If you lose consecration, you lose vision and passion. It's very easy when you're coming up as a child of God, especially when you're a young lady, to just want to do things because you see other people doing the same thing. And you say, I'm just going to also have a loose life, but it will come with the cost. Your purity, your purity is important. Your purity is key and, 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 and important. Otherwise, it will cost you your vision. It will cost you your destiny. Some delays that many people are encountering, even in the area of marital settlement, it's not that God blocked it. It's because there was a season where you missed it. And that, that you have to ask and repent of that state. Oh my God. Let me track and leave this matter. If you are a symbol of character, you, you resemble good character. You will be a, a symbol of vision fulfillment. Oh my God. Why do you think... That a man who would want you to lose your purity is not quick to want to take you down the aisle. Why is it that you would shake up with somebody and you will wake up tomorrow and find out that they married somebody else? What went amiss? Let me plant it there and just say it. If you are a symbol of character, you will be a symbol of vision fulfillment. Your character will help your vision come to fulfillment quicker. Be careful of the snare of imitation and competition. You don't have to compete with others. Be careful of the snare of imitation. You don't have to imitate others. Somebody shout one more time. My vision will not fail. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, he says, we do not have the audacity to put ourselves in the same class or compare ourselves with some of you who supply testimonials to commend themselves. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they lack wisdom and behave like fools. I can't be in comparison and competing with other people and measure myself against other people in a silly way. 
I will lose wisdom. I run my race. I compete with myself. I can't behave like a fool. Oh, shakodia bahasa takadaba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It is in imitation and competition. People are trying to fulfill someone else's vision. That's when you now start a business because you saw somebody else doing the business. You're doing it because you saw somebody else. I've got so many scriptures I want to give you, but I just want to get through this teaching so you get it. In imitation and competition, you are trying to fulfill someone else's vision. You're abandoning your lane to run another person's lane. Somebody tell your neighbor, I will not. I will not abandon my lane. I will run my lane. Run in your lane. Take your neighbor and tell them to run your lane. Run in your lane. Run in your lane. Don't abandon your vision to run somebody else's lane. In imitation and competition, people are trying to outdo other people. They are trying to outshine other people. They are trying to deshine other people. When you are competing with people, you are so concerned about what they were wearing, or how you can make them not shine. Shine your shine and leave others shine. Run in your lane. Until you leave your lot, you don't locate your lot in life. Let me say it again. You remember lot in Genesis, L-O-T. Until you leave your lot, you don't locate your lot in life. The lot, the lot in terms of wealth, your, your possessions. Life is not designed for imitation, child of God. Life is not designed for competition. Life is designed for full expression of your potential. You are designed for full expression of your potential, your manifestation of destiny. You are not designed to be competing and imitating. You must be an original. Somebody take your neighbor and tell them, you are a designer original. You are a designer original, my darling. You are designed for the manifestation of destiny, expression of your full potential. What is my potential? My vision cannot fail. I need to, I need to express my vision. And the best you can do and the best you can be in this world is to be who God wants you to be, not what somebody else wants you to be or what you think is the best. What does God want you to be? The best you can achieve in this world is what God wants you to achieve. What does God want me to achieve? When you choose the way of imitation, you are choosing the way of limitation. I refuse to be limited. I refuse to be limited. I refuse to choose the way of limitation. When you choose the way of imitation, you limit your life, you limit your destiny. When, you're, when, you str when your struggle is to attempt to be like somebody else. Oh my God. Competition is complication. Oh, somebody type that. I like even the way they sound. Competition is equal to complication. If you want to avoid complications in your life, avoid competition. I refuse to be limited. I refuse to be complicated. My life cannot be complicated. I refuse to compete with... They are not in my league. You are not in my league. I compete by myself. Never struggle to make an impression, child of God, but always struggle to give expression. If you are to struggle for anything in this life, struggle to express yourself, not to make an, an impression. I don't have to please everybody. I don't have to please nobody. I only have to express who I am. I lift up my hand so that I, I, I make sure that I show who I am in this life. Hallelujah. I don't struggle to make an impression. Mm -mm. I'm already an impression. God has already, I'm, I'm, imp it, I'm, I'm an imprint. 
I'm only just checking platforms and I I I I I I can struggle to make expression, not an impression. If you don't like me, tough. Another enemy of vision failure that you're going to have to watch out for is procrastination. Everybody type procrastination on the comment section. Procrastination, procrastination. The book of 2 Samuel chapter 20 verse 4 to 6. The Bible says, Now the king said to Amasa, the commander of his army, Summon the fighting men of Judah to me within three days and be present here yourself. So Amasa went to summon the fighting men of Judah, but he delayed longer than he than the time which David had set for him. You see problem. You give somebody an instruction and say, go and get them together. Look at this. He delayed longer than the time which David had set for him. Understand, child of God, there are certain things that are timed. And the problem that we miss our manifestation is because we don't do things in the time frame that God opens the door. And now you have to wait for another season where you're going to pray for an opening, for an opening for the opportunity to come again. But when the opportunity now comes at that point, oh, Rabbi Hashat. Now the grace is no longer moving at the pace it was moving. Now the destiny helpers are on to other projects. Don't think that the world is just waiting for you to just get your act together. So don't be, don't be amazed when, because you, you didn't get your act together. So God gives you another rope and he says, okay, go get yourself together. I'm, I'm redeploying the troops. Let them go and help Sharon for now. Because clearly, maybe David is not ready. And, and, and let, let them be busy with Sharon. Because it looks like Sharon is ready to grab it. I, 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 are you tracking with me? Procrastination. Somebody shout procrastination. Beware of procrastination. Look at the scripture. Ah, oh my God. And David said to Abishai, his nephew, Now Sheba, the son of Bitri, will do us more harm than Absalom did. Be because of your procrastination, because you didn't move, you didn't attack when I said you must attack. Now I am, I am weakened. Now I cannot, my, my fighting, my strategy is now in vain. Take your Lord's servants and pursue him so that he does not find fortified cities for himself and escape from our side. I would have killed the enemy when it, he was napping. But because my troops were slow, were slow, and God is looking at us and he's saying, if you attack the enemy, when I tell you, I take him at the gate, you should not have allowed him to enter the gate. We would have had a better advantage, but nevertheless, let's pursue nonetheless. Procrastination. Procrastination. Reuben said about Joseph says let's not take his life do not shed his blood but instead throw him into the pit and 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 let's throw him into the wilderness do not lay a hand on him they did not know that that procrastination was working good for who for Joseph because he was not killed and he had to rise to his prominence and his stature of prominence and become somebody that God wanted him to become. Oh, shakada bahasata kadia Oh, Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9 to 10. The Bible says, for I am the least, I'm the least. Paul says, I'm the least. If you look at me, I'm the least. I'm, I'm the least of the apostles. I'm the least to be counted worthy. If you look at me, I did not fit to be called an apostle because I, at one time, I was the one who was killing Christians. I was oppressing Christians. I was violently persecuting Christians and I was persecuting the church of God. But, oh, there's a but that interrupts. Paul realized, he says, the vision was so big that these ones were busy dilly-dallying. I wrote most of the New Testament. He says, I did more than the ones who were chilling with Jesus because they got too familiar with Jesus. They thought that they've got the time and everything. But I'm the one that grasped the revelations more than the rest of them. Talk to me, somebody. I am what I am because of the grace that he has towards me. And it is not without effect. Paul says, I am because I was more hungrier than the apostles. I was 
more hungrier than the other disciples. They walked with him. They ate with him. They thought he was their chummy and their pali. But me, who was the least of the apostles, I was there on the outskirts. I was doing the worst things ever. I was a prostitute. I was this and that. Look at me now. That is the challenge that you are looking at me now. And you are saying, I am not, I'm not worthy to preach this gospel. The challenge that you're having as, as, as you are looking at me now, you're saying, I'm not worthy to be wealthy. The challenge is that they're looking at you. They're saying, how is it that you secured marital settlement that they are still on the outskirts? And, but it's because they were gossiping about you. It's because they thought that you are a nobody or you're not entity. You'll never amount to anything. They didn't understand that there is a God that takes repentance. They did not understand that there's a God that turns things around. There is a God that takes men from the back and puts them in the front. There is a God that changes things around and that takes a nobody who looks like a hobo and makes them somebody. There is a God that takes somebody from the pit and puts them in the palace. There is a God that can establish and change your future just like that. Just like that. They did not understand it. They did not understand it. They did not understand that you got to the point where you were so hungry. You were hungry, but God, you were so hungry for this thing. You were hungry for this change that they were caught napping. They did not go and study and they don't understand. Why are you wearing that gown? Why are you suddenly graduating? They don't understand it. How you became their boss in their workplace. How did you get elevation to become the supervisor? They were napping. They were napping. They were napping. And while they were napping, poverty entered their life. And God said, I I reward those who rise up. I reward those who put in the work. I worked harder than all of them, says the Apostle Paul. I worked harder. Esther said, I look like I'm a nobody. I look like I'm a slave girl. I look like I'm coming from a background with nobody. But he says, I'm the one to replace Vashti. I'm the one to take over. I'm the one to, who, who's here to save my nation. I'm the one who is going to make sure that Israel, the Jews, get survive this Holocaust. That I'm the one. I'm the one who knows that I was born for such a time as this. I'm the one who qualifies for the unmerited favor. I'm the one who qualifies for the blessings that are befalling me. Don't blame me. Don't blame me. Don't say I'm being braggadocious. It is my reward for my hunger. It's my reward for not procrastinating. It's my reward. Just like that, God will do it for you, Penny. Just like that, because of your hunger. Just like that, because you put in the extra work, the extra mile, everything. My God. Procrastination has to be dealt with. It has to be obliterated. Procrastination is when you fail to take action, when you are meant to take action. Procrastination will lead you to both vision failure and destiny failure. And I know that I don't qualify for neither of those two things. I, ah, my destiny cannot fail. My vision cannot fail. Procrastination, you have no place on this, this body, this house, this household, this family. We don't have room for procrastination. Hey, vision, ladies and gentlemen, is for runners. It's not for complacent people. Vision is not for people who are not idling. Vision is for runners. Vision is for the high flyers who are ready to move, who are fed up about being fed up, who are fed up about being stuck. Vision is not just for documentation. Vision is not just for decoration. Vision is for action. Ah, somebody did not hear it. I said vision is not for documentation only. Yes, Habakkuk says write the vision, write, make it plain and put it on tables. Yes, you documented it, but it's not meant to be sitting there as a decoration. It is meant for action. Somebody type in the comment section, vision is for action. Vision is for action. I will take action. No man can waste God's time. Whenever you try to waste the time of God, he gives your place to another person. There's room for overtaking, baby. You cannot waste the time of God. Don't think that God is just waiting. If you will not worship me, if you will not praise me, the stone will praise me. If you don't want to do it, somebody else is ready to do it. God will replace you with another person. Keep dilly darling. Keep saying you will not have sense. You are not ready to serve. You are still too young. Blah, 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 blah. God will replace you. And you will look back and say, oh, I had that vision. Oh, I had that idea. Why did I not move? Keep bragging. God will move on. 
When you are wasting time, when you are wasting time, understand that someone else is warming up to do what you needed to do. When you are wasting time, somebody is warming up and training and, and running the track. You say, okay, there is, as at now, I don't know who is the most fastest runner on these athletics and all these games they play, but there is always somebody who's ready to break the record that the other one broke. The one that they broke at the World Cup now, somebody is already preparing and saying, the next World Cup, the next World Cup, I must make sure I break that record. Somebody is warming up to do what you were meant to do. There is no destiny for indecisive people. If you are indecisive, destiny does not clock for you. Does not clock for you. There is no destiny for the indecisive. When people are meant to take action, when people are meant to make decisions in their given time for indecision, has no destination. Did you hear what I said? I said indecision has no destination. Decision has a destination, but indecision has no destination. It doesn't matter how late you came into God. What matters is how aggressive you are progressing. I am aggressively progressing towards this thing. The abundance of action will produce an abundance of acceleration. Oh my God. I'm saying so much. I hope you're catching it. I said the abundance of action will produce an abundance of acceleration. More action, more acceleration. More action, more acceleration. More action, more acceleration. I don't run out of fuel. I'm aggressively, progressively moving towards this thing. Come on, somebody. The abundance of labor will produce an abundance of results. I cannot work this thing and it not produce results. Vision is for action. It's not how long you came. It's how hard you work that determines how fast you move. How fast you move will be determined about how hard you work. It's not about how long you came. That's why some people wonder when, 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 when they started 15 years ago, you come in in, in in 10 days, you are able to achieve what they've been trying to achieve 15 years. It's not your fault. Vision is for action. It's your aggression for progression. I'm aggressively progressing. Another enemy. Oh my God, time help me. Wrong timing. You need to be careful about wrong timing. That's an enemy of vision. Okay, I've got, I've got six minutes. God help me. Wrong timing is a problem. Wrong timing. Wrong timing can kill vision. Vision failure it can be affected by wrong timing. Somebody write wrong timing. Firstly, you need to understand that there's a timing for everything. That is what Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 says. There is a time for everything. There is a season. There is a time that is appointed for everything and a time for every delight and event or proper or purpose under heaven. There is a time for everything to manifest. Be careful of wrong timing. God says in verse 11 of, of chapter 3 of Ecclesiastes, he says, he has made everything and beautiful in its own time and appropriate in its time. Everything is appropriate in its own time. He has also planted eternity, a sense of divine purpose in the human heart, a mysterious longing which, which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. There is something that can only be satisfied by God. There is something that he has planted inside of you. There is only something that can only manifest at the timing and the season that it can only manifest. Yet men cannot find out, comprehend it. Yet men cannot grasp it, what God has done. Can you grasp what God has done? Can you grasp what God has put inside? side of you from the beginning and to the end my god you are loaded there is a timing for everything but the man said who made you a prince and judge over us do you intend to kill me as you killed the egyptian then moses was afraid and said certainly this incident is is known daniel chapter 9 verse 2 the bible says in the first year of his reign i daniel understood from the books the number of years which, according to the word of the Lord, to Jeremiah the prophet, must pass before the desolations which had been pronounced on Jerusalem would end, and it was 70 years. Do you understand that these are people who understood the timing, that there are certain things that can only happen at a particular time when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all gathered in one place, in one accord, gathered in one place, in one accord,
But when in God's plan, the proper time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the regulations of the law. When the time was right, God had to come and present Jesus to the world, born of a woman, so that we can understand and comprehend because we wouldn't have the comprehension and the understanding of how a man can be born of a woman without intercourse having happened, but the Holy Spirit having enveloped Mary. Come on, talk to me, somebody. John 2, 3, 4 says, when the wine was all gone, the mother of Jesus said to him, speak to him. He knows what to do. Wine, water tend to wine. There is a timing and a season when things just unravel and things start to happen. Come on, somebody. Oh, Rabba. Ah. Timing, 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 timing. Somebody write, I'm on time. So you now understand that even though it is important to act quickly to accomplish vision, it is equally important to know that there is a right time to action it and there is a wrong time to action it. There is a timing under the sun, under the heavens. Everything has its own time because if you execute too early, you might execute too quickly and the thing just explodes. It takes preparation to experience manifestation. What did I say? I said it takes, it takes preparation to experience manifestation. Somebody please type it in the comment section so that somebody echoes it and, and remi is reminded. It takes preparation to experience manifestation. It takes preparation to experience manifestation. I need to be prepared. I need to stay in my waiting room. I need to stay in my preparation room. Beauty can only be born when Peppo's Mary's time. When Peppo's Mary's time, that thing becomes beautiful. Esther had to be prepared. And when she came out, baby girl, my God. And the king said, this one I have laid my eyes. This is my queen. Beauty can only manifest from what you are cooking in the secret. When Peppo's Mary's time Time. Everything is made beautiful. When preparation me kanama shoto kodi abaha and meets experience manifestation blossoms. God is a God of times and seasons. Child of God, when the timing of the vision happens, hala kodi abaha. When the timing is right, vision happens without effort. Vision just manifests without much effort. You don't struggle. Effort is massive when time is not due. Effort, you will feel like you are struggling. You are doing so much because it's not due time. I am tired because it's not due time. I'm struggling because it's not due time. But immediately when I sink into due time, when there's a synchronization with due time, things move easily. Doing the right thing at the wrong time is never beautiful, but doing the right thing at the right time, my God, it's so beautiful. Another one, let me quickly wrap up. Oh God, one more minute. Be careful of the wrong approach, the wrong approach, the wrong approach, the wrong approach. That is a vision killer. The wrong approach is a vision killer. The wrong approach. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 15. Ecclesiastes 10 15 says, The labor of a fool so wearies him because he is ignorant that he does not even know how to go to a city. Wrong approach. You do things, but you don't know how to do them. You just do them for the sake of doing them. Anyhow, the labor of a fool so wearies him because he's ignorant. He does not know how to go to a particular city. First Samuel chapter 17, 38. Then Saul dressed David in his garments and put a bronze helmet on his head and put a coat of male armor on him. Hallelujah. There is a right approach to everything. There is a right approach to every vision. Be careful how you approach your vision, my God. Vision requires a know-how. Vision requires that every divine agenda is connected to a divine procedure. There is a divine agenda to a divine procedure. Talk to me. You cannot fight the battle of the Lord with the armor of soul. You have to fight with the right armor. Every vision has its procedure. Talk to me, somebody. The vision may be similar, but the procedure may be different. Oh my God, it might look like we are running the same business but it is not the same procedure that is why my business will excel and yours will not excel at the same pace you will not make the same profit because the procedure is different talk to me my god i will not fall into the wrong approach my god as i pray and as i close father thank you for your word that you have delivered to us this afternoon in jesus mighty name we are grateful my god in the name of jesus father we ask lord that your purpose for our life my god will not fail your purpose for the life of those who are listening to the sound of my voice right now it will not fail in the name of jesus christ father i thank you your plan for our lives will not fail we will not engage in wrong approaches. 
as we pray, my God, and as I pray for all this congregation listening to me right now, draw us closer to you, my God. Father, we pray that you draw us closer. Deliver us from every trace of infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ so that we may be able to fulfill our vision, O God. Our vision shall not fail. Show us what to do and when to do it and how to do it. In the name of Jesus. Show us what to do and when to do it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Show me what to do. Show me how to do it. Show me the timing I must do it. I bless you, PVP. I bless you, my online church community. I bless you this morning. I bless you this afternoon, depending on the country that you are tuning in from. You are blessed in your going in and you are blessed in your coming out. You carry with you the authority to be fruitful, to multiply and to fill the earth and to subjugate it and to make sure that you dominate every single thing that is in your path. Your vision shall not fail in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you that you will access every channel of your blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. In you shall people be blessed. Your family shall be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Your blessings shall abound. You will do good, not just for yourself, but you will do good for your family members in the name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed. Your vision will not fail and cannot fail in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody who believes God, shout a believing amen and an amen and an amen in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you, those who are tuning in from YouTube. God bless you, those who are tuning in on Facebook. God bless you to those who are tuning in on TikTok. Thank you so much for showing up. I know some of you on TikTok, it was an impromptu. You did not know that the online church broadcast will come today at this time, but thank you nonetheless for joining. If you have not followed us, please make sure you click that follow button and you click the notification bell. If you're on YouTube, kindly click that subscribe button and make sure you like the video that you have just watched. There's also other messages that you can go watch and you will be blessed in Jesus mighty name. If you need to communicate with the ministry, there is, um, I believe there is information on the video that is scrolling if you're on YouTube. However, if you're on TikTok, go to my bio, the bio that you are watching me from. Do not try and follow me afterwards. You might follow the wrong person. Follow me now. Go to the bio, screenshot the email address. If you want to communicate with the ministry, anything that you need, you can just email us there. And we will also send you a link to our WhatsApp um, announcement group as well. God bless you. I trust the word was awesome and you learned something awesome and powerful. God bless you. God bless you. I will see you guys tomorrow, 5 a.m. South African Standard Time, every single day of the week, 5 a.m. for our prayers for one hour or 45 minutes or 30 minutes as the Lord will lead us. Make sure that you invite a friend tomorrow, 5 a.m. God bless you. You're welcome to go and re-watch the broadcast. If you started late with us this afternoon at 11 o'clock, go and watch the teaching one more time on YouTube. God bless you. <laughs>